Okay, so we have some, again, some church participation today. Now, I handed out some papers to different people, so I, and, and it was based on numbers. Whatever number you gave me, that's the number. So when I called the number, you know, I mean, I got Lois confused on her number already today. So when I call the number, it's your time to, as far as what I handed out. Well, wish me luck, because when my loan went back here, some of these words I don't Okay, well, then it's negotiable with Rick. Where's Rick at? <laughs> You have number one, don't you? Well, it's only a few. I want the short. <laughs> Rick, Rick is one verse. I don't mind to do the long one. It's just the words. But I'll pronounce them the best I can. Okay. That's all I can do. Remember, they're all written in Greek. Remember that. you want to read from? I don't want to read from. Oh, okay. Rick, there's your microphone. Okay, me and you'll stand right here. No. Now, me and you, okay, you stand right here in front of me. Okay, go ahead and read. Or go ahead and say your part. You have joy and gladness for baby Jesus' birth. Amen. Joy and gladness. Amen. Thank you, Ryan. Makes you nervous, Amy, holding that, doesn't it? Mine is for Michael 5 too. But you, Bethlehem and Freyans, through you are small among the clan of Judah. Out, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, who or are from of old and from ancient times. Right. Thank you, Rick. 800 years ago, or excuse me, 800 years ago, 800 years before the birth of Jesus, Michael was told as to where Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. So we're going to do something a little different. Um, this is my mom's idea, so if you don't like it, you know. <laughs> um, we are playing a little game, and it is Christmas 20 questions, and Eleanor is going to ask you the questions, and I actually have the answers, but I think you're going to know them anyways. And, um, some of them are a little tricky, though, and uh, the one, one of them is actually a very educated guess. So, please figure out which one of those it is. You ready? Okay. Who told Mary and Joseph to go to Bethlehem? You guys are supposed to answer that. <laughs> so, anybody want to say? No. The governor? Caesar Augustus. Yeah. Technically, he did tell them to go to Bethlehem. That's a little tricky. You like O for one. That's not true. Yeah, I can probably get them all wrong. <laughs> okay. True or false? Mary and Joseph. Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem for the birth of Jesus because they were following a star. False. 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 Okay. false. What? What form of transportation did Mary and Joseph use to get to Bethlehem? The answer is not a taxi cab. Somebody <laughs> wants to say that. <laughs> I was a camel. No, it was a donkey. So, um, actually, it doesn't say. A lot of people think it was a donkey because that would be the logical form of transportation. But, yeah, that's a we don't know the answer. It was a donkey bus line. What'd you say? It was a donkey bus line. Well, there's a donkey in that picture. Yeah. So it must yeah. Be it. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, many people believe it's a donkey, but it doesn't actually. Which Old Testament prophet had the most to say about the birth of Christ? So I did this with Jesse last night, and he was like nailing these. Oh. It's like whoever has reading number two. Reading number two. Jesse knows the answer because he said it last night. Anybody want to try? I would say Isaiah. Isaiah. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In the accounts announcing the birth of Christ, Matthew 1, and Luke 1 and 2, how many times did the, an angel or angels appear? This, this one tricked us. It's three. Yeah, so one for the birth of John and three for Christ. Um, the angel appeared to Mary and Joseph individually and then to the shepherds. So, okay. Who told Joseph the baby's name was to be Jesus? What'd you 
did you say? So the Bible, the Bible doesn't say that it was, it says it was an angel in Matthew one twenty one, but it doesn't say it was Gabriel, but most people think it was Gabriel, but it doesn't actually name Gabriel specifically. Can you list five names of Jesus found in the Bible? Some of my lists are from Old Testament prophecies. Yeah, this one kind of threw us. I'll just read them. Is this wonderful. From the Bible story? You mean like wonderful? From all Counselor, Almighty God, Prince of, Prince of Peace, Prince of Peace, Star of Bethlehem, Everlasting, Everlasting Father, and then the other two is Jesus and Emmanuel. Peace. 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 They cited Isaiah 9, 6, and Matthew 1, 23. <clears throat> what are the meanings of the names Jesus and Amiel? Amen. And Jesus is the Savior. The shepherds and the wise men went to see Jesus. Which group followed a star and which group went to find the baby because an angel told them where to look? What did the angels sing to the shepherds? Fear not. So it doesn't actually say the angels sang, but they praised God with these words, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, good will toward men. That was Luke 2, 14. Well, how do they know where to go to look then? They probably said other things. Huh? They probably said other things. Oh, okay. <laughs> when the shepherds went looking for Jesus, what was the sign they were to look for? Yeah, what well, he said, find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes laying in the manger. That was the big hint. <laughs> okay. How many wise men or kings or magi came to see Jesus? <clears throat> At least three. At least three. We don't know. They think three because of the three gifts. Yes. Matthew chapter 2 verse 8 says that Herod, Herod, Herod asked the wise men to inform him where the baby Jesus was. Why does this verse say he wanted to know? Good. Can you say that louder? I want to worship him too. He wants to worship them too, but we all know that wasn't the case. Yeah. Yeah. How old was Jesus when the wise men found him? Mm. We don't know. Three. three. So, so last night Jesse said three, and I said, but Herod said to kill all the babies under two, so he really could be three. Um, the answer I have is that he was somewhere between a month old and a couple of years, but that the journey from Persia to Mesopotamia was 500 miles and would have taken at least a month. So by the time they arrived, Jesus was probably in the house. So they were saying a month to two. Jesus what? did say three last night. I'm sure he has a really good reason for that. What are the three gifts which are mentioned being given to the by the wise men? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Which empire ordered all the young ch children be killed? Emperor she means. <laughs> it's okay. Emperor she loves his empire. So who is it? King Herod. What animals does the Bible say were present at the birth of of Jesus? Sheep. So there's probably sheep because the shepherds came after. Well, so you probably made the right over, but after. Donkey. And then um, going back to the previous answer, Isaiah says a prophecy that talked about at least a donkey seeing the crib of the master and an ox being there too. So we can, if we believe that a prophecy says that, is referring to, to Jesus, then that would be an ox and a donkey. But there's probably sheep because the shepherds came and they probably have a sheep with them. 
What was the name of the unkind innkeeper who would not allow, allow the pregnant Mary to lodge in his inn? What is the name of the priest who was told priest who was told he would not die until he saw the Savior? Okay, last one. Two of the gospels, two of the four gospels, gospels do not mention the birth of Christ. Which two? Mm -hmm. Mark and John. Mark and John. All right, good job. Good job. Right. Good thing you're not grading it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We think we know the Christmas story. Huh? This has taken place, Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Isaiah 9, 1 through 7. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past of the humble, the land... A Zebulun and the land of. Give us a letter. N A P H T A L I. And that love. Yep, that's but it. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep dark, darkness, a land has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest. As warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder, for as in the day of the Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the greatness of his government, and the peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Amen. You can go wherever you want to go. Okay. I appreciate that Mike realizes I'm not as young as I used to be, but when I look at the size of the text of this he gave me, I don't know how old he thinks I really am. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this is a poem called, Jesus is the Reason. In Bethlehem, God gave to us the source of Christmas joy, a star showing on a miracle, the virgin birth of a boy. He was born both God and man, a Savior for us all, the way to get to our heavenly home if we just heed His call. So as we shop and spend and wrap and enjoy the Christmas season, let's keep in mind the sacred truth, Jesus is the reason. Amen. 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 Okay, I have Luke chapter 2, 1 through 20, the birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, 
and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be, word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Can you hold that for her? Okay, and Kevin said he didn't know how uh, old he thought, Pastor Mike thought, well, I didn't know how old or young Roger thought I was, because it's very, very small. So, this is called the Christmas Story Poem. Before the earth was molded, before the dawn of man, before there was a universe, God devised a plan. He looked into the future in the hearts of unborn men and saw only rebellion determined to do wrong. But saving sinners from themselves was God's plan all along. I will send a rescue, rescuer to... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> to do what they can't do. A sacrifice to pay the price to make them clean and new. But only one is qualified to bear this he heavy cost. My spotless son, the Holy One, to die upon the cross. Without hesitation, Jesus stood up from his throne... I want to give my life for them. It is my task alone. It, in eons past, a plan was formed and sealed with God above. A Savior came to set men free and did it all for love. Amen. Thank you. This week four of Advent, as we light this fourth candle of the Advent wreath together, Lord, grant us in love, or grant us love in our relationship. In this transient world, love seems to be fleeting. True love is everlasting and founded on your sacrificial offering for us. We often receive a message that freedom is doing what we want. You gave us free will to have the opportunity to say yes to you as you pursue us in love. Love is patient. Though we have waited four weeks for your birthday, ancestors waited centuries, and even millennia. Anything that is worth, it takes time. Grant in us this wisdom for other seasons as well, as we are always in a season of waiting on something or someone. Though your mother Mary didn't have all of the details in a plan laid out, she was happy to offer her life to you because she knew and loved you. Like your will for her, you want the best for us. Help us to want the best for one another so we can grow deeper in trust with a humble and surrendered heart. To be submitted to another is to be under the same mission. Lord, you are love. You came from love, in love, and with love to share with the world. Help us to accompany you on this mission through our vocation for one another, our families, and the world. Unite our wills to yours so your work of love can be done in us. Amen. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. 1 John 4, 8. Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew 22, 37-39 Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Wife must respect your husband. Ephesians 5, 25 and 33 Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. 1 John 4, 8. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. 
It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. 1 John 3, 18. Amen. Something funny happened. <laughs> I gave you the. We mean something funny happened. So, That's Miss Bill word. No, Mom's scripture no, had right. mine on it. So no. I'm going to read hers. See. No, I can't see on my glasses. Um, <laughs> anyways, it has. I believe you. Does everyone believe Harley? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to. <laughs> You know yeah. what? <laughs> I'm going to read it anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I, I, here you go. Thank you. Make sure I know what I'm supposed to read. Okay. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave, him, gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, Messiah the Lord. This will... This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord had told us about. So they, so they turned. Bleh. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them and this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Right. Thank you, Harley. I'm not sure how you saved me, but I know you saved me some way in there. I'm not real sure. You know, so. This is Matthew 1, 18 through 25. Thank you. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Amen. 
I want to do a couple songs. Uh, I know one of them we've done here. Uh, the first one is it, called Hallelujah Christmas, and a lot of people have heard this before. It's a beautiful song, and it's sort of the answer to the original content of the song. Um, it's, it was a, as a question to the Jews, and this is the answer, I think, to that question for the Jews, the Hallelujah Christmas, about the birth of Christ. And uh, then the second we're going to do is the uh, greatest story ever told.
still the greatest story ever told and will always be. greatest story ever told. It's a love story. It is a love story. We're talking about God from the beginning, Genesis through Revelations. It's all about love. You know, you can read through the Old Testament, try and figure it out, and, and on. I'm just going to tell you right now, when, if, when you read through the Old Testament, just focus on love and understand it is all about that. Because God is love. He is love. Open your Bibles to John chapter 1. And we're going to look at the first 14 verses for the, just for the next couple of moments. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him, all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, his name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him 
all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet, to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the only begotten Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. God's holy Word. There was a time before the creation, before the foundations of the world, that the Trinity got together. And I don't know how that all happened. I, it's way beyond me, way beyond my comprehension. Maybe if you know it, you can tell me, explain it to me. But before God breathed into the nostrils of man the breath of life, it was decided that Jesus would come to this earth. The one who created all things that was created would have to come to this earth in order to buy back, in order to bring back together us with our Creator because of our sins. The greatest love story ever told. And we can only reflect and just try to appreciate a little bit of what truly what John says in his third chapter, the 16th verse of that great love that God has for you. He loves you so much that, that He was willing, and not only was He willing, but He did send His Son Jesus. God Himself came to this earth to die for me, and to die for you. No greater love than that, than for Him to lay down His life for you and for me. No greater love. And yet, I just wonder how often and how much we really appreciate that love. It makes me wonder sometimes how much I appreciate that. Do I just take that for granted? Because anybody who's been a Christian for a while, sometimes it just kind of goes, you know. And I'm a Christian today and I'm a Christian tomorrow. But we need to always be reflecting on that great love that He has for us. And Jesus came into this world as we read in our Scripture reading this morning. How He came into this world and yet the Creator Himself, and yet we didn't recognize Him. We didn't recognize Him as to who He was. And we had our different readings and our poems this morning and our songs this morning and just everyone who participated this morning all pointing to the coming of the Messiah. The prophecies of old, we just picked out two of the prophets, Micah and Isaiah this morning, to talk about this. But it was all pointing to the coming of the Messiah, the Savior of the world, because of God's love. And, and, and people knew it, but they didn't recognize it, they didn't accept it, because the world then and the world today would much rather live in darkness. They would much rather live in the pleasures of the world and in the sins of the world than to, than to let the light shine in their life, to let the, than, than to let the, 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 the light shine within their heart to be able to, they, they would rather live in that kind of a world. And I don't understand it because, and I know that you don't understand it, we just know that that's how it is. Because you and I have been given a taste of what that true love really is. And we've accepted that. And when we accept that, we have a hard time understanding why other people don't. I know I do. But yet we are called by Him 
And we should be so willing to answer that call of the Great Commission to share that love with other people. To let other people truly know how much God loves them. That yes, we do, we celebrate this Christmas season and people cannot get past that manger. They cannot get past the manger, which is the time that we use, that's the symbol that we use for the coming of the Messiah. We use that, we use the star, okay, we use the Christmas story that we talk about. We use that to symbolize this Christmas season, but we don't go beyond that. People don't go beyond that. December 26th comes around, and the gifts that they were given, which would be too much, will be repackaged up, and, and, and they'll be getting online and, and getting their returns, uh, whatever, you know, that they can send those back. Or, or if anybody goes to the malls or to the stores anymore, they'll be packing those up on December 26th and head back to the malls or to the stores to return the gifts or exchange the gifts or do whatever. Because we've already forgotten the greatest gift ever given to us. We have forgotten the love. While Jesus was here on this earth, He was all about love. He was all about. He radiated with love. And as he talks to his disciples, I believe somebody, I believe it was read in our Advent reading today, where, where it says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, you should love one another. He said, By this, by this, by this love, everyone will know that you are my disciples, Jesus said, if you love one another. They'll know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Which means, as followers of Jesus Christ, we as Christians ought not to be fighting and bickering with one another. Because the world sees that. And the world judges that. And if they see us fighting and bickering amongst each other as believers in Jesus, then they question that love of Jesus. Because Jesus himself said, he says, he says that if everyone, if you're my disciples, you'll love one another and the world will know that you're my disciples by the love you have for one another. That's what we're called to do. We are called to radiate that love that was poured out upon us by God himself. The time that we celebrate, yes, that true love, the birth of love into this world. Love. Paul, the Apostle Paul, told the Romans in the 8th chapter, and you know, the 8th chapter of Romans, you know, is one of those chapters that you could really live in. I mean, you know, you, you could really spend a whole lot of time there if you wanted to, and, and I, I'm not sure if you could ever, really ever expire everything that's really talked about in that chapter. But in the 38th and 39th verse, it says this, Paul says this. He says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, uh, nor angels nor demons, neither present nor the future, nor any powers, neither heights nor depths, nor anything else in all creation. You know, I, I, I've, I've messed up a lot in my Christian walk. I've messed up a lot, you know. I, I, I'm walking on the King's Highway so much, and then I think I'm on Devil's Road a lot of times, you know. But, uh, but, 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 but he says, neither heights nor depths nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. No matter, no matter what I do in my life, he still loves me with an unconditional love. I wouldn't love me. I wouldn't love me for what all, all the things I've ever done. I wouldn't love me. But he loves me. He loves me so much that, yeah, he, he sent that, that baby in that manger that we celebrate. And he went to the cross. In Ephesians 4, 17 uh, through 19, Paul again writes this. He says, 
so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp, listen to this, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. Do you understand it? I don't. I don't. I mean, I hear what Paul says, and I read read what Jesus says, and, and I've read the book many times over, and I still don't understand it. To try to comprehend and to think that 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 you know that, that, that that's how much he loves me, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. You know, that, that's the love. And in, in 1 John 3, 1 and 2, the Gospel writer, who now writes this epistle, says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Dear friends, now we are children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made, been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like Him. For we shall see Him as He is. What great love the Father has lavished or bestowed or poured out upon us that we can be called the children of God. Be called a child of God. You know, if my adoption into sonship was based on me, right? You wouldn't, have, he would, you wouldn't adopt me. Yeah, you wouldn't. You wouldn't adopt me. You wouldn't, you wouldn't want to call me one of your children based on if you were to look at all the stuff over here on this side of my life. You wouldn't want me in your family. The God who is full of grace and mercy and love Because of that, he, he adopted me. He adopted me. He adopted you too. We are children of the Most High. But yes, love was poured out on that first Christmas night that we all see, that we look at this Christmas season, that we celebrate the birth of of our Savior. I, I guess I rank that as the third greatest holiday. Third greatest. First being Easter. The second being my salvation. And the third being the birth of my Savior. I have to stick my salvation in there, you know. It has to, because he died for all of us, but my salvation is better than his birth. Your salvation is better than his birth. But it's not better than him dying on the cross. Because he gave his life for all of us. Who would have known 2,000 years ago when he was born, when those shepherds came in from the hill country, that they saw this baby lying in this manger, or when those wise men finally made their way, whether, they were, whether he was a month old or two years old or anything in between, that that one lying in the manger, that they attested to be the Son of God, if they only knew what was going to happen 33 years later, they had no idea. You do, I do. Only thing God wants you and I to do is to accept His love may not have been correct in how things transpired and we know that the king wasn't celebrating we know the lamb didn't talk to the shepherd boy etc and the shepherd boy didn't see the king doesn't matter a child a child sleeping in the night he will bring us goodness and light that was the gist of that song so we wish you on behalf of Faye Ann, on behalf of Faye Ann, who's just wanting to get back here so bad we're hoping that we all get that little shot that that works you know 
that she wants to get back here so bad, but Chocolate bars. Jesse is thinking nothing but chocolate. <laughs> okay. I'll say it. Okay, Lorraine, you're in charge of this because I I'm not good at this part. Faye had messaged me and many people did not receive chocolate bars and she asked me she I guess she put names on some of them of people that didn't receive them and I'm supposed to pass them out. So if you do not receive a chocolate bar last week I'm supposed to make sure that you get right. One. And some goes to like family, like like yes, yeah, you know, family. yeah. So you know, so maybe come over and check and see if you have. See Lorraine, is that is that the bottom line? Because you might receive one, but somebody I received meant three. to have one. <laughs> Before they were no, no, after they were wrapped too. I got home last week and Faye said, "Do you have any left?" I said, uh, I, "I told her I gave them two." And she said we should have, uh, she said she should have 19 left in that box. <laughs> I said, I think it was about 16. <laughs> Anyways, she told me she had names on them, so she has oh. specific, maybe just check the box and okay. see if there's anything. Okay, and I may ask a couple of you guys if you wouldn't mind maybe dropping off the other folks so I get home and take care of things. I was going to do that, but uh, some of you preachers got long-winded today, you know. So, yeah. blessings and Merry Christmas to everyone.